Galatians chapter 2. All right, verse 15. Okay, this is where we're going to cover uh, two points right here in this one verse. Notice what Paul said to Peter. He said, we who are Jews by nature, right? So this is really good against Garner Ted Armstrong's belief or replacement theology or people who are anti-Semite. What they would like to do is that they would like to try to distinguish Jews as the two southern tribes of Israel and the ten northern tribes as Israelites or something different. And then that's where some other anti-Semites get involved, where they talk about the Khazarians and other stuff. They all try to root it down to this. Now, you got to understand this. Jew is all 12 tribes. Now, you might say, why is that? Because Peter, Paul is speaking to Peter, right? We are Jews. Isn't that what Paul said? You know what Peter was from? The north. He was from the northern part of Israel. I thought there was a distinction with Jews and then that. No, there's no such thing. Amen. There is no such thing. Yeah. Everyone's a Jew. Amen. Who taught you that, I wonder? Come on. Come on. Did you get a verse on that one? Or did someone just planted that idea in your head? Yeah, right. Then it shows, see, that the Bible didn't teach you that. Amen. It was man. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at right here. So we have proof at verse 15. You can use that against your replacement theology friends who are anti-Semites. So point out that at verse 15, that we who are Jews by nature, that one, according to verse 15, that Peter, who's from the north, Galilee, that he's known to be a Jew. All right, now a second part of verse 15. We who are Jews by nature. So Paul recognized that by flesh, by nature, we are Jews. The next part, and not sinners of the Gentiles. So Paul is explaining to Peter that, hey, we're Jews by nature, and we're not like the wicked Gentiles. Now, this is interesting, because isn't everybody supposed to be a sinner? Yeah. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But why is it right here that at verse 15, Paul makes a distinction like sinners of the Gentiles, when everyone's supposed to be a sinner? Because the term sinner, it actually refers to a wicked person. Sometimes the Bible, it is true that all of us are sinners. But sometimes the Bible, when it uses the word sinner, it's referring to someone who's really a sinner. Like you ever, remember when Jesus was ministering or helping out some prostitute who repented yeah. what did some of the jews said if he knew who she was that she was a what sinner yeah. see what they knew they what people understood is that in, in reference to a wicked person let's look at the book of john chapter 9 here's one example let's look at john chapter 9 so notice that this term is used not to just say that everybody's a sinner but that Hey, you're a wicked person, like that. If I say, for example, you know, Sean's a sinner, he might say amen. amen. Yeah. But if I say, like, Sean's an evil person, then Sean might go, amen. whoa, what did I do wrong? No, no, you're not going to do that, okay? You're going to go, whoa, what did I do wrong? <laughs> I'm going to go, Sean, you're wicked. And then what, he's going to go, what, what did I do wrong? But see, that's that term used for sinner, yeah. all right? So then if I say, Sean, you're a sinner, but in a term where he understands it like I accused him of a murder or something like that, then he's going to go, what did I do wrong, you know? So that's the idea during those days when you call people sinners, is that that term is used to re reference to a really wicked person. Man, this weather is really sinful, you know? <laughs> so let's get, let's get going right here. Okay, so let's look at John chapter 9. Look at verse 24. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. So you notice that by that tone, they're saying that this person is like a really wicked, evil person. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Amen. So we see right here that the term sinner is re referenced to a really wicked person. And actually, the funny thing is this, is that people in this world, when you call them a sinner... They all get flat out offended and they're yeah, like, you're calling me yeah. a really wicked person. 
Now, our way of justifying it is saying that, no, everyone has sinned. But I'll be very honest. No, you're, yeah, you don't realize you're wicked? When did you have premarital sex? When's the last time you drank, huh? Didn't you know that according to the Bible back those times, if you're a drunkard, a fornicator, and all that, you are a what? You're a sinner. And I don't just mean just generally, oh, we all sinned, amen. No, you're wicked. You're wicked, man. So if a person does that next time, I just feel tempted not to say, hey, you know, I'm just not saying that. I'm saying that everybody's a sinner. I just feel, sem feel tempted to say, yeah, you don't think so? <laughs> I just feel like saying that one day. But that'll just be in the flesh, you know. <laughs> Unless I'm fully convinced by the power of the Holy Spirit in me and I get filled with wisdom, then I might just point that out. But that'll be on a rare blue moon, you know. That'll probably be on a rare blue moon. <laughs> All right. So let's look at verse 16. Now, this verse you want to highlight. This is one of the most important verses in your Bible that you want to highlight. Very good verse. To, we tried to memorize this before, too. So this is a really good verse. So at verse 15, we saw that, one, that Peter, even though he's from the north, he's a Jew. But a second thing we also learned right here, that the term sinner does not have to be in reference to generally that to all of us. It's not generally all. It can also have a reference to a really evil person. Now let's look at verse 16. This verse should be memorized. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Paul said, we know. No, no, no. All right? We don't debate. We don't guess. Amen. Why should a Catholic and a Christian keep debating about this? No, this is something you should know. Yeah. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. You are not justified. Justified means declared righteous. You are not declared righteous by the works of following the law right here. But by the what? Faith of Jesus Christ. It's by faith. Faith in Jesus Christ that you are declared righteous. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. Have you believed in Jesus Christ? Okay, automatically then, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. So you are automatically justified, declared righteous, just by the faith of Christ. And not by the works of the law, period. No works involved. For by the works of the law, you follow the works of the law, shall no flesh be what? Justified, declared righteous. Now, have you heard these cute little sayings where these cults are trying to combine faith and works together? If you really have faith, then your works will come out. No, the verse says, no flesh justified by works. Yeah. And this verse says, if you just believed, just that alone, you are justified, declared righteous. I don't know how you deal with that. I don't know how you deal with that. That is not faith and works together. You don't see that anywhere. If you have real faith, then you're really going to have works. Chapter and verse, please. Chapter and verse, please. And don't give me a verse where it applies to a different dispensation. Yeah. Give me a different one. So let's continue reading right here. Verse 17. But if, okay, if what? While we seek to be justified by Christ, while we seek after, we want to be declared righteous by Jesus, we ourselves also are found sinners. So... When we are declared righteous by the faith of Jesus Christ, we're not going by works, right? So then we're found to be what? Wicked sinners. Absolutely. Because we're not doing anything to clean up our sin problem. Yeah. All we're doing is putting our trust in Jesus Christ. We, all, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? So is that the result then where Jesus Christ is the minister He's responsible. He's the author of all people living wickedly after they receive Jesus Christ for salvation. God forbid. That is important to understand. So it is important to understand this. The two greatest books in your Bible that debunks works and strongly defend faith alone is Romans and Galatians. But here's the thing. Paul does not give a license to sin in both books. So let's look. So Galatians, this is a verse as proof. Galatians 2.17, Paul does not recognize a license to sin if you're saved by faith. And then with Romans, his proof text is Romans 6. So go to Romans chapter 6. 
Romans chapter 6. Notice the same language and tone is used. The same language and tone is used. So we saw at verse 17, license to sin? No. There is no license to sin. And then this is confirmed with Romans chapter 6 as well, verse 1. Notice what Paul said. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So should we just continue sinning because we're saved by grace? So because we're saved by grace, we can sin and do whatever we want. Verse 2, what does it say? God forbid. So Paul says, no, we don't recognize a license to sin. So when people accuse you as a license to sin, so you're saying that if I receive Jesus Christ for salvation, I can drink, smoke, and dance, and, sit and do whatever I want. If you're in the flesh, you can ask them this question. When did I say that? <laughs> if you're in the flesh, you can just say that. <laughs> but the thing is this, is that they, see, obviously, they just made things up. They just inserted something. So they make an assumption that because you're not doing works that you're going to sin. No, that's not what we're saying. That's not the issue. The issue is it's faith. That issue is it faith or is it works? Not an issue if you're a totally different subject outside of salvation that God has to deal with you. This is just between you and God. 